Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. I'm going to go through some cases for you. Here is a patient with an aortic dissection. Here we have an example of an aortic dissection. And starting from the top, you can see the thoracic aortic arch here. And as you follow right down, you'll just see an abnormality here. And that is the intima. That is the intima which has been pulled away from the inner wall of the aorta. And you can see some calcifications here that are associated with the intima. And if we go down lower, you'll see that there is another lumen. There is a more highly attenuated, more densely enhancing component of the aortic lumen. This level, you can see that there is a larger lumen here and a smaller caliper lumen here. This more densely enhancing smaller caliper lumen is actually the true lumen. It is the lumen that, even though there's a dissection, is still encompassed by intima. You see, the intima here is the intima which has pulled away from the thoracic aorta inner lining here. And it contains the densest contrast of calcification in this case, but that's not always true. Follow it up again. And you can see that it starts in the distal aortic arch. And importantly, it does not seem to involve any of the great vessels. So here's the aortic arch, and if we look at the ascending aorta, you see brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid artery, and left subclavian artery, all of which appear unaffected, and the dissection begins just distal to the origin of the left subclavian artery. And I think you'd probably be able to see that even better in the coronal images. We have those coronals here to draw. So here we have the arch. There's the aortic arch here. And here is this dissection beginning just distal to the left subclavian artery. Here's the left subclavian artery coming off. Okay, so you can see that there is dense contrast of pacification in the ascending aorta and in the aortic arch and that just beyond that origin of the left subclavian artery, and let's make sure we know this is the brachiocephalic artery, and then comes the left common carotid artery, and then comes the left subclavian artery. Remember that the brachiocephalic artery gives rise to the right common carotid artery and right subclavian artery. So we see those three vessels, and then just distal to the left subclavian artery, we see this abnormality developing, an aortic dissection, and the, the Intima is pulling away, and here you see that there is contrast in the true lumen, which we call the, the true lumen, the lumen that is actually bounded by intima circumferentially. Whereas here a lumen is forming of a nature that is between the intima and the wall from which the intima was pulled away. And we follow that down a little bit farther, and we start seeing that there are two lumina. One is a true lumen, one is the false lumen. And here down at this level, you can see that some contrast has seeped into the false lumen, and that 
we have contrast here in the true limit. And that goes all the way down through the abdominal aorta into the iliac vessels. And you can even see that there is some involvement of the iliac vessel, certainly on the right there, uh, in this dissection involving it at that level. Okay, going back to the axial images, let's see what we can see. So this is true lumen, false lumen. And it's usually the case that the true lumen, that means the one that the lumen that is bounded all the way by intima, is more densely opacified. And the false lumen here is bigger. And that's usually the case. It tends to be bigger because the intima pulls away from this inner lining and creates that false lumen here. And if we follow that down inferiorly, you'll see the true lumen is quite small, but you still have contrast opacified blood, meaning oxygenated blood that is perfusing the false lumen. Now here we'll look at the origins of the vessels coming off the abdominal aorta. Uh, the first one is going to be the celiac celiac artery. Is that involved with the dissection? Well, it seems pretty well open. And then below that is the superior mesenteric artery. Aha, here you can see the dissection extending into the superior mesenteric artery. Here's the false lumen, true lumen. Here is the intima flap. And you see it actually going into the superior mesenteric artery. And now we're diving inferiorly. And you see the true lumen here, contrast opacified in the the false lumen also contrast opacified, but with an intima flap. So this is a dissection in the superior mesenteric artery. So the aortic dissection has extended into it. And that is important because that creates a risk for thrombosis, thromboembolus, and the patient is at greater risk for vascular compromise to the bowel. Okay, and then let's follow this down to the distal see the branching into the left thumb and the iliac artery. And here we have the right thumb and the iliac artery. And here you can see it's aneurysma. And here's a dissection. We'll take a look at that in the sagittal plane. That SMA should be interesting there. And let's see, let me get a good close look at that here. So here is the abdominal aorta. We have a dissection here. This is the intima flap. This is true lumen, false lumen, and this is some thrombus that's formed in the false lumen. You can see that we have contrast opacified blood getting into the celiac artery and superior mesenteric artery. And the superior mesenteric artery, well, it's hard to tell that there's a dissection in it because it's in the very plane of the sagittal image. Here is the inferior mesenteric artery. So, again, just giving you an overview, aortic dissection beginning in the thoracic aorta. in the distal aortic arch. And you can kind of see that if you follow this ascending aorta and aortic arch, you can identify what is the true lumen and therefore follow continuity of that true lumen and determine that it is indeed this part of a lumen, this lumen, that is the true lumen and this is the false lumen. And look for involvement, importantly, of the celiac artery, which is not present here, the superior mesenteric artery, which is present here. And you can see that division right there. And always look for renal artery supply. And here's the right renal artery, which looks like it's compromised. 
problems by this deception, but being supplied nevertheless by the true lumen. And here's the left lunar artery supplied by also the true lumen. They both seem to be enhancing symmetrically. I was wondering if there would be a difference there because this is supplied by the right renal artery that's involved with this dissection and appears somewhat narrow. Okay, so basic example of an aortic dissection.